Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So my biggest announcement, lo and behold, is on the screen. This Friday at 7 p.m., right here, we are going to be hosting a showing of The Force Awakens. The best part is, it's free. <coughs> yes, it's free. So invite your neighbors, invite your coworkers, invite your family, your friends, and come on down and see The Force Awakens. It's a story of good and evil, and hey, we're all about fighting evil in the world. So come on out and enjoy a good, nice, wholesome movie night. Um, to invite more people to come to that, we're actually going to be putting door hangers on our nearby neighbors' <coughs> homes. So if you would like to come back after you run out and get something to eat today, we're going to start that at about 1 o'clock. So come on back and grab some door hangers and we'll just go up and down the rows of houses here in pairs and um, invite people to come back and see The Force Awakens Friday, June 17th at 7 p.m. free. <coughs> okay, I'm ready to worship. Are you ready to worship? Yes, I think we'll walk on this. Okay. Our worship leader has a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, we invite you to stand and join us in singing I Will Follow. <laughs>
Savior. Holy Lord, we are yours. We come into your midst this morning to feel your presence and to hear your voice. Lord, it's easy for us to feel as though we don't matter, that we are insignificant, that we don't have a place or a purpose in this world. But Lord, help to remind us this morning that you call on all of us to serve. You call on the most unlikely of people to rise up and to follow you and to hear your voice and serve your will. Help us hear your voice this morning. In your name we pray. Singing with beautiful things.
challenge the time in our service that we remember who we are as a community of faith by reading our village paper. It will be printed on the screen behind us, and it is also printed in your program if you would please follow. We are the Village Church. When we gather in community, we remember that God is with us. We know that we are imperfect people who make mistakes. We give thanks that God loves us anyway. In this community, we practice patience, compassion, and forgiveness. When we leave this gathering, we go out to share God's healing love with the broken world. We are Jesus' instruments of hope in our world. We are followers of Jesus, and we can change the world. Kids, you are dismissed to go downstairs. Big kids, we are going to be reading a story about Moses and Exodus. Moses was shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the west end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. The angel of God appeared to him in flames of fire, blazing out of the middle of a bush. He looked. The bush was blazing away, but it didn't burn up. Moses said, what's going on here? I can't believe this. It's amazing. Why doesn't the bush burn up? God saw that he had stopped to look. God called to him from out of the bush, Moses, Moses. He said, yes, I'm right here. God said, don't come any closer. Remove your sandals from your feet. You're standing on holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, afraid to look at God. God said, I've taken a good, long look at the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters. I know all about their pain. And now I have come down to help them, pry them loose from the grip of Egypt, get them out of that country, and bring them to a good land with wide open spaces, a land lush with milk and honey, the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. The Israelite cry for help has come to me, and I've seen for myself how cruelly they've been treated by the Egyptians. It's time for you to go back. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the people of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses answered God, but why me? What makes you think that I could ever go to Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? I'll be with you, God said. And this will be the proof that I am the one who sent you. When you have brought my people out of Egypt, you will worship God right here at this very mountain. Then Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What do I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Tell the people of Israel, I am sent me to you. God continued with Moses. This is what you're to say to the Israelites. God, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob sent me to you. This has always been my name, and this is how I always will be known. Now be on your way. Gather the leaders of Israel. Tell them, God, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appear to me saying, I've looked into what's being done to you in Egypt, and I've determined to get you out of the affliction of Egypt and to take you to the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, a land brimming over with milk and honey. Moses, and we know that sometimes you call us, and even though we are reluctant, we want to answer your call. So speak to us today. We are listening. Amen. We want to show you a clip now from Star Wars The Force Awakens, just to give you a little preview of what's going to happen on Friday night. We're going to introduce the character Finn to you.
while we try to find the clip. We're having a little technical difficulties today. Okay, I'm going to tell you about Ben. Okay, we were having some technical difficulties. How many of you have already seen the movie? How many of you have never seen the movie? All right. In the scene... Han Solo and Finn and Ray are three characters and they go to see this really crazy looking woman named Maz. And they are looking for help. And Finn used to be, that's Finn. Finn used to be a stormtrooper who are the bad guys. And they start talking about how they need help from this woman named Maz. And Finn says, He's afraid of the First Order because they are so scary. And we should never go back to try to even fight it, the First Order. And he expresses that he's afraid of going back to the First Order. But Ray is this really courageous young woman. And she says, Finn, you have to help us. And Moss tells um, Finn that she can tell by looking in his eyes that he's afraid and he wants to run away. So she says to Finn, there's some guys over here at this other table in my cantina. And they will take you to a faraway planet and you can run away and hide. And so Finn walks over to the two guys in the canteen and starts to talk to them. But Ray, who is a brave young woman, goes over to Finn and says to him, How can you do this? We need your help. We need your help. And he says, I have seen the First Order, these scary guys, and I want nothing to do with them. I'm going to run away as far as I can. All right? So Finn is one of the pivotal characters in Star Wars The First Force Awakens. He has been a stormtrooper in the First Order. They are the bad guys. You need to remember that. The First Order are the bad guys. Finn was kidnapped from his family and trained to be an unquestioning soldier for the First Order. In his first battle, though, he refuses to shoot his weapon at all. He sees his friend die. And soon thereafter, he escapes from the First Order. When we pick up the story, he has met up with Ray, a brave young woman who is trying to help the resistance. These are the good guys. Yay, the good guys. Ray and Finn are joined by Han Solo. You may know him. He's a good guy who's been around since the first Star Wars movie. Han Solo takes takes them to see his friend, Maz Kanata, who runs a cantina to ask for her help. We learn that Finn is not so brave. He has been pretending that he's part of the resistance, but he's not part of the resistance. He is just a scared AWOL stormtrooper. He wants to get as far away from the fighting as possible. But Ray needs his help, and she sees something in him. She sees his bravery. She sees the good inside of him, but Finn only wants to run away. He is scared. A little bit later, Finn comes back. The fighting begins, and he wants to help his friend Ray. He begins to find his courage. Spoiler alert, by the end of the movie, he becomes a hero for the resistance. Finn has some similarities with Moses. Moses was also not raised by his parents. Though he lived in the Pharaoh's house in a place of luxury, he was living with the tyrant king who was making the lives of his people miserable. Remember, all the other Hebrew boy babies were killed by Pharaoh when Moses was born. Moses was saved only because of the savvy of his mother. 
So both Finn and Moses live in places of great unrest. Then Moses was called upon to be a leader, to do good for the suffering of his people, in much the same way that Finn is called upon to help his people. And Moses said, no way, just like Finn. Moses was afraid. He used excuses about how he didn't have the skills. He couldn't speak eloquently. No one would listen to him. Moses said, God, why me? I'm nothing special. Why would the people listen to me? I don't even know your name. But God wouldn't hear any of it. God responded to each one of Moses' lame excuses. As you probably know from your Old Testament history, Moses became a great leader of the people and said to Pharaoh, what did he say? Let my people go. And eventually Pharaoh did let them go. He let the slaves be free. Of course, then Pharaoh did chase them down with an army, and God had to set them free by parting the Red Sea. <clears throat> but God saved them. Then they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, but God eventually led them into the Promised Land. But at the beginning, Moses did not want to be a leader. He felt ill-equipped. Just like Finn, Moses was afraid. He wanted to run in the opposite direction, but God would not hear of it. The mission would not hear of it. They both had a job to do that only they could do. It was the purpose for which they were put on this earth. What is your purpose? What is God calling you to be and do? You see, God uses unlikely people to achieve God's purposes. This past week at the annual conference of the United Methodist Church, we heard all sorts of stories of God using ordinary people to achieve God's purposes. We have been part of the campaign called Imagine No Malaria. Bill Gates is actually partnering with the United Methodist Church to eradicate malaria from sub-Saharan Africa. When this campaign began years ago, a few years ago, four children died every two minutes from malaria. Now, only one child dies every four minutes. Now, that may still seem like too many children, but imagine three children are now living every two minutes that would have died without this campaign. Our church contributed several hundred dollars to the campaign. Thanks to our youth who had a car wash and to our Christmas miracle offering. The West Ohio Conference contributed more than three million dollars to the campaign. That was some unlikely people coming together to achieve God's purpose. You may not think God has a purpose for you, but God does. Your job is to discover that purpose. <clears throat> One way to discover your purpose is to pray. Pray every day and listen to God. Don't just talk. Listen. Ask God what God has in mind for you and then wait and listen for God to respond. It's hard to wait, I know. I am an impatient person. Another way to discover God's purpose for you is just to try some things. Try something new. Get out of your comfort zone and do something to make a difference in the world. Volunteer with an organization that is doing something with people you care about. We talked about this last week when we asked, when does your heart break? If you know when your heart breaks, then there are probably other people whose hearts break over the same thing. There's probably an organization doing something about it. Find that organization and volunteer with them. Now I can hear some of you saying, I don't have any gifts or skills, I don't know where to start. Neither did Finn or Moses, but they dove right in. Moses had no education or formal training about how to be a leader of a people. 
He resisted God because he didn't think he had what it takes to be what God was asking him to do. But God promised to help Moses. With every one of Moses' objections, God had a response. When Moses first said, who am I to save your people? God said, I am with you. That's a big deal. Whatever we're called to do, we don't have to do it alone. God will be with us and give us strength and wisdom. Then Moses said he didn't know what name to give for God when the people asked him. And God gave that now famous answer, I am who I am. God is the great I am. Then Moses said, suppose they won't believe me or they won't listen to me. So God gave Moses three signs in order to show the people that he had special powers given by God. Moses had a staff that he could turn into a serpent. And he could make his hand leprous and then make it healed again. He could pour water onto the ground and have it turn into blood. Then Moses said, I am not eloquent enough to be a great leader. I am not a good speaker. But God said, I will give you your brother Aaron. He is a good speaker. He will go with you. God equipped Moses by giving him a team. Moses ran out of excuses and finally accepted God's call. You see, call is everything. If you are called, God will give you what you need in order to live out that call. Or God will show you the way to learn what you need to know in order to live out that call. Or best yet, God will send along other people to be your team to help you accomplish the task with you. You don't have to do everything. Moses had Aaron and a team of people to help him. God uses unlikely people to achieve God's purposes. So what does God have in mind for you? What is God calling you to be and do? Whatever it is, it is your unique purpose. Only you can discern it. Others can encourage you along the way, but it is your call to claim. Whatever it is, I urge you not to resist. Don't be like Finn. Don't be afraid of your call. Lean into it. God created you with particular gifts and with a unique purpose in mind. Trust God. Be the person God put you on this earth to be. Amen. We had our West Ohio United Methodist Conference this past week at Lakeside. Uh, Shelly Savory was there and Pat Groves was there as our church's uh, member. And I'm going to ask Pat to come up now and tell us a little bit about the conference. I brought my... She brought all her stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. I don't know, the mission report is probably interesting. So I'll just... Embarrasses me. The God's story that embarrasses, it embarrasses me. But God, like, must reply that. Um, I've been trying for several months to sell our whole hand cap accessible van, accessible and I finally, oh my gosh, finally sold it. So the guy comes and he's going to buy the van, we'll get us on the road, and uh, <coughs> I, I told him I wanted the hand cap van, it's going to be expensive. So I'm selling this van for. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Um, so I told him I wanted sixty-five hundred dollars for the van. I really wanted seventy-five hundred, but I was in the deal. So he comes in. I'm sorry, I don't have all the money. I can I can give you part of it now and part of it later. So he gives me forty-five hundred dollars, and we write up this little piece of paper, and I type up this little piece of paper and print it out, and it says on the paper that he's given me forty-five hundred dollars, and that he will then um, when he finish the deal he's going to give me fifteen hundred dollars okay cool now you're all smarter than me because you're all probably sitting there thinking what that is not sixty five hundred dollars 
So I stuck this in, in a little envelope with the title to the van, and I took it out. I totally like not think about this, and I had no things to think about. Put it on my door. I took it out when I was going to give me the money, and before I needed to finish the transaction, and I look at this piece of paper, and it's like, uh, wait a minute, this does not add up to sixty-five hundred dollars. And I thought, hey, you dumb ass, like. You are, you know, I'm a math wizard, but I should be able to figure out the difference between $4,500 and $6,500. And I stopped for a minute and I thought, God, you did this. And let me tell you, let me tell you the story, because you're thinking, okay, cool. Okay, the guy who bought this van, his son is a high school student, and two years ago, he was shot on his way home from school and is paralyzed from the neck down. He has not been able, barely, he's barely been able to leave the house since this happened because he, you know, like has to take tarps, which is like nightmare transportation. And I mean, I realized how amazing this was and what a struggle it was for these people to come up with six thousand dollars and and i said at the end of the day i said thank you god for making this happen and i'm just i mean i think that at the end of the day we were all truly blessed so that's my god story at the moment all right annual conference uh as, as sherry said we all Ventured all a difficult trek to Lakeside and had to spend several days there. Oh, uh, what a shame! But uh, we were in Hoover Auditorium most of the time, so I don't think we were out having, having totally having fun. Um, this was a pretty boring conference. I think we would all agree. Um, we passed a lot of uh, you know reports like we. We pass the budget. We we <laughs> vote for people to do business slots and on and on and on. We one of, I guess the most interesting thing is we sold a, a United Methodist camp for a dollar. I guess that was another God thing. Um, but the best part, and always the reason I like to go to annual conference, the best part of annual conference is the worship and the imagery. And if you this the picture doesn't show it really well, but um, this was the stage, and the lighting changed from time to time. So it would be sometimes it was red with with pink, and sometimes it was purple, and sometimes it was blue. It was just an amazing visual image, and um, the the worship and the preaching is just really incredible. Um, the most memorable thing for me was Peggy Johnson, who is a bishop in another uh, conference. Um, preached about disability and um, that was a very moving um, thing for me because of course my connection with, with Cindy and having to deal with disability on a daily basis but um, a couple of things that came out of the conference for me were um, exciting things were the um, emphasis on disability and that people in churches need to really think about that and making our, our spaces accessible to all people. And the other side of that, the other piece of that, and you'll see some of it, is looking at, at mission and um, the, the conference is raising money this time for New Church Starts. And the exciting thing to me about that is it's not about building big like churches with big screens, although I like screens because I do the PowerPoint, but reaching people going out to where the people are finding people who don't have access to god who don't know god's love and god's grace and and creating space for them to come to receive god's love and to worship so all of that has been just that was really exciting to me and um if you have any questions about annual conference come to me and ask and i'll be glad to share more with you yes shelly
And when, when, when they play the organ and you sing those old time hymns, if you're like an old person, that is just amazing. <laughs> I think about when I sit there and I hear that, it's like I, I, I look around and I think all of the saints who have been here, and we are all gathered in this room right now. <coughs>
time in our service when we share our joys and concerns that we might pray with one another. Rosie asks us to pray for the friends and family of those killed in the nightclub in Orlando. I think you might have all heard about this. There was a nightclub called Fultz. That's an LGBT nightclub in Orlando. There was a shooting overnight. The death toll is now up to 50 killed and 50 who were injured. So we want to pray for all who are concerned in that tragedy. Juliet asks for prayers for a family that my daughter knows that needs shelter and support from our community. He says, I have a loved one who needs your prayers to be uh, kept safe and to be open to receiving help from a dangerous situation she is in. Let's pray together. Holy God, we offer you the concerns of our hearts, both spoken and unspoken. Pray for the tragedy in Orlando and for those who mourn. We pray for an end to gun violence in our country and for an end to hate crimes. God, with those who are sick, give them healing. Be with those who are struggling, give them direction. Be with those who are hurting, give them comfort. God, forgive us when we are not the people you created us to be. We hurt one another and we hurt you by our actions and by our failure to act. Forgive us, we pray. God, we give you thanks for so many blessings. We thank you that you give us gifts and that you call us to make a difference in the world. When we feel like Moses and we want to say we are not up to the task, Help us to remember that you are with us. You will equip us to do what you call us to do. God, we pray for our world. Bring an end to all suffering. Bring peace to end all conflict. Help us to treat our neighbors with love and kindness. Help us to be like Jesus. We pray in his name. We will receive our offering now for the ministries of our church as the basket is passed. We invite you to place your gifts in the basket. And uh, as the basket is passed, touch the basket to give thanks for blessings in your life and to uh, bless the gifts that are given. Thank you.
couple of reminders. The lead team will meet after worship, and we'll meet here in the worship space. And if you want to come back at 1 o'clock and help us pass out door hangers in the neighborhood, we'll be happy to have you help us with that. So put your trust in God. God will never fail you. Go in peace and show the peace of God with everyone you meet. Amen. Amen.